Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagan Radian here in Northern Virginia on the 75th anniversary of the Battle of Midway, the turning point of the war in the Pacific when the United States Navy sank four of Japan's heavy carriers, crippling the Japanese Navy, and it was all downhill from there, even though it was a very, very tough fighting that would continue for another three and a half years. And on this show, we are sometimes honored to have our, uh, uh, honored to have our guests, but this time I am positively honored to have a survivor of the Battle of Midway and a submariner at that, the last surviving crew member of the USS Nautilus that sank one of those four aircraft carriers. We're positively honored to have with us Chief Gunner's mate, Hank Kudzik. Sir, thanks so much for joining us. You're quite welcome. You're quite welcome. I want to start, you know, this is the 75th anniversary of the Battle of Midway. Um, how does it feel to, for the commemoration, you know, you were at the World War II Memorial today. What were some of the emotions that were going through your mind? Well, the the career, my Navy career, on which I made 14 war patrols, and and some of them were very emotional, you know, that because because of what you know of what we we as the submariners, we you know, we had a we had to take troops to different places and in some of those some of those fighting marines were wounded or dead and we had to bring them on board and this was and then we had to bury them you know which was which was sad was sad i i started out my career in the navy when i got over to pearl for the first time they put me on a work detail where where I had to help, we had to help taking the dead sailors off of the battleship Oklahoma. Oh, that was that was tough doing, you know. I, if you look what the remains of some of them that were in the basket. Oh, it was terrible, and uh, but that was I, I didn't like that at all. And then we had to go to the Ogallala, which was a mine lair, and we had to take some of the bodies off of her too, you know, and. Um, not very, not a very pleasant task, and um, of course I was very, very young when I, when I said I wanted to go on a submarine, and the Battle of Midway was coming up, and I was crew member on the Nautilus, and uh, so we, we, we sailed, we sailed in our appointed patrol area. You know, just sitting there because, you know, you know the, um, the 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 well Nimitz and his group, you know, they they were getting things organized because they knew that the Japanese were were, were going to try to hit Midway. They, that was established, and we happen to. Well, on our patrol, a big flotilla of Japanese, different types of planes, no carriers, but a, a lot of other auxiliary ships carrying ammunition, carrying troops and everything. And they came in right over us. We, we didn't have to, didn't have to plot as to, no, no, we, and the skipper was elated, he said, Skipper's name was Brockman, an executive officer was Ozzie Lynch. And, of course, and I, my, my, my watches were in the area where these office, officers were. I was either on a wheel or was right next to the periscopes and down in the control room where the planes were and some of the pumps I had to operate, uh, trim pumps. And, and uh, so I got, I, I got to hear a lot of the, what, what, what they were trying to do or going to do. And when that flotilla was coming over, because the skipper said, I, I, we don't even have to plot this, but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna pick out two big guys. The, the, you know, they're in our area. Okay, I'll, I'm gonna make four torpedoes ready and I wanna fire at these two and then I'm gonna use the, the, um, the stern tubes to fire the two. He said, we, we're gonna get ourselves 
we're going to get ourselves a couple of ships here, big ones. Well, we would have, but we didn't. Uh, what happened is he fired his four torpedoes. Too far. They all hit their target. They all hit their target, and and uh, but none of them exploded. And we then we found out this is going to be a problem. At the very beginning, it, why all of a sudden they the tor torpedoes wouldn't fire? Well, we found out later on after a lot of tests that they were doing, they found out the alloy of a little pin. You know, they changed the composition of that metal, and it was lighter, and that, that's what was doing it. That's right. That was a big problem with the Mark 14 torpedo, yeah. and it was the exploders. Yeah, that's right. And so your position early in the war was so many other submariners yeah. went through, which is you were taking the risk to get these guys in your gun sights. You were shooting at them, and the torpedoes weren't going off. Well, that's right. And as a matter of fact, well, after that episode... You know, they went on their way, and we we're still there scratching our suits. You know, we could have had two ships, and we could have even had four, if, you know, if we wanted to keep firing, And but the buggers wouldn't, they wouldn't explode. And uh, so, so we sat on patrol there waiting for any more, and no, nothing came. So we had to stay on our, our own air area. This was an air battle. Everybody knows that. Four carriers against four carriers, and uh, and uh, we we were so fortunate to have our our airplane pilots do as well as they did, and uh, the 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 Hellcats were were more of a match that Japs could handle because they they were very maneuverable. They could turn and uh, faster than. And that was an advantage, and and uh, so well, what happened a day or so after more uh, after this episode, of the torpedoes wouldn't fire. We um, we encountered, you know, some of my watches were like on the wheel, in a, on a scope when you submerge, you poke it up every so often, take a look around. I saw smoke on the horizon. That's right, and, and just to tell our audience, um, you're the guy who basically spotted the I Japanese spotted, aircraft carrier. I, I spotted the smoke from the carrier, and uh, I looked again and again, and, and then I, t I told the diving officer, There's, I see smoke. So he took a look, and he he confirmed that it was smoke. We got we to gotta tell the captain. So the captain come rushing to to where the scopes are, took a look. He said, hmm, yes, we got, but we, we don't have a silhouette. We don't have a, now this is broad daylight now. We, we don't have a silhouette. He says, what we got to do is get closer. So he said, we're going to surface and make a run towards the smoke. And that's exactly what we did up to where a silhouette did appear. And we could look in the, the silhouette books and find, and we identified it as the Soryu, S-O-R-Y-U. It was the last, we didn't know it was the last carrier. And uh, she, the smoke came from a couple of bombs she took on her, on her flight deck. And they were, patch, they were patching them up so there, whatever planes were up there, they couldn't land anywhere because their their carriers were already sunk, and so and this was the last hope they had to land on on the Soryu. So we spotted the Soryu, and she had two escort vessels that were protecting her. And so the conversation between Captain Brockman and Ozzie Lynch. Ozzy, he said we could pump that, but the one escort vessel was in the way. That was, we were afraid the torpedo would hit that before. We didn't want it to hit that escort. We wanted it to hit. So he said to Ozzy, he said, I'm going to fire, I'm going to fire three torpedoes, and I'm going to try to maneuver around 
where I can get my torpedoes in between that vessel. And his primary work was to pick up survivors and transfer some of the survivors from the carrier over to. That's what he. That's what they were. That's what he was doing. And so the score was he was going to. He said, "Ozzy, all I need is three torpedoes." And um, there are two s scopes on a submarine, one for attack and one for to observe. And you crank in your, in your computer, you know. In those days it was, the submarines had the first computers. They were the size of a refrigerator and they were all mechanical, little wheels. You had to, you, had a, you know, put in things that would give him an answer like his speed, his course, you did all estimates, and you you know what your speed was and your core was. And you crank all this in, and then it gives you an answer. That was the uh, torpedo data computer, the data right? Which was CDC, the torpedo data computer, and uh, and and I, I the reason I was on a wheel or not. Well, my you had a, a normal sailing. You had your watch four on, eight on, four off at different places, and we rotated some. But when you're when you're in battle, your your, your battle stations, and and, uh, and I was on a wheel. That was my okay. I was on a wheel, and uh, and and so he, he, he and, and they were talking about the range. He wanted to get closer, you know, and. How close, Ozzy, do you think we... Somebody said, even before we went on patrol, that the maximum range is 1,500 yards. Now, you shouldn't go any more than that. Get, you can get less, but how much, how much shorter should you make, make that distance? You know, we, had, we had nothing to open up a book and tell us what 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 the range should be and so they were dickering back and forth and, and if finally he said Ozzy I'm at I'm at 750 yards we know now that I was too close 750 yards and and in this these two escort vessels one would way far behind the other one was close to the vessel and I, I remember Ozzy said, Captain, don't, don't miss, don't, don't miss. He said, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to man, man, maneuver at least one torpedo around this one towards the Soryu. And the skipper said, I was so close I could see the Japanese writing on different things. And... Uh, so he, they plotted and they, okay, they were set to fire. And he said, make, give me three torpedoes. Make, them, make the tubes ready for, and so he was set to fire. All right, and away they went. He fired three, one, one, one right after the other. He, he fired a little bit of spread, but he did, he did manage to get around that, on the port side where that vessel was blocking the carrier and uh, he fired three, bam. One exploded, we heard that one. Number two exploded. Number three did not explode, but it hit the target. Well, he said, that's all we need is two. He's gonna go under, you know. In which he did, you know, he took a more severe, he was listening anyway before, but he took a more of a severe list. We couldn't stop him, he went over. He went over and we were so tickle pink and, and, he, and these escorts now, you know, knew, you know, they, they, they had to get us. Well, they lost their last hope to get save their planes, and uh, 
It's a funny thing when you hit a ship on that side, they know you where you're at in that area. You're on if you hit your torpedoes hit the port side, they know you're you're there and they come after you. Well, the one that was picking up survivors and one that was close to um, he wasn't paying too much attention to us, and he he's trying to pick up the people in the water and. Uh, so we kind of backed off, and now we, now we dealt the cards, and we want to get him. And it, Brockman was so tickle pink that he got the carrier, and he said, "Ozzy, how are we going to get this guy? He, it's, it's either going, he's either going to get us, or we're going to get him. How do we do this?" And. Uh, he, you know, he was dropping charges on us, and uh, oh, I did. The skipper said, "I'm, I'm going to stay as close as I can to him, and he's going to. If he sees our torpedoes coming, he's going to, he's going to try to get out of the way." He said, "I, I don't want to give him that opportunity." I. I, I, I want to make it bad for him that he cannot get out of the path of our torpedoes. He said, all I need is one. All I need is one torpedo for him. But he is, he's, he is not in a position that I would like. I want him more of a target. I want him to turn. Now, I'm close enough to him. How do I get him to turn. Well, he, he agreed, the only way I can get him to turn is I'm going to let him see our periscope. That's deadly. That's deadly. You know you're, you, you bought it if you let him do that because you're so close. And he said, and Ozzy said, don't miss, don't miss, Captain. Don't miss, he, you know. So he, he did turn to come to where we were, and he he exposed more of of his one side, the, the position he was in. And Captain, he wanted another torpedo already, and he he let it go. Thirty, so close, and at that at that speed, that tin, that, that 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 tin can didn't have didn't didn't just didn't make it turning. Around it, and, and and he was he was still more of a bow shot, but more of it was exposed, and uh, we got him. He, he captain got him. He says, "Oh God, it, wake! I got him, Ozzy! I got him!" And oh, my. then the second one started coming after us. He, he could see what was going on, and he he came bearing down on us, and oh my God, and and. We took. He was. He was getting pretty close with his his depth charges. Oh, they were really, they were really doing a number on us. And because they told us we shouldn't, we shouldn't exceed 200 feet. 200 feet isn't much at all, you know. His 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 charges were 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 going off at 300 feet and some in that range. And boy, they were really doing a number on us. And, and somehow, the, man, the maneuvering, we managed to get a, a good sign was the, when you could be, there become distance between the charges, and we knew we were we were pulling away. So night, night, nightfall came. We had no place to go. We sat in the area, and because uh, that was our patrol area, and uh, so we even we even came up and made sure we had enough juice in the batteries, put the put the batteries on line, and be sure there was no he wasn't lurking anywhere in the dark, and. Uh, 
And then when, when daylight came, there he was. There he was. Now we had good distance between us. We and and uh, the talk between them. He said, "Ozzy, there he was." He said, "If if it worked yesterday, Ozzy, do you think it'll work today?" I got him. You know, we got to try to get him. Okay, uh, and. Uh, Okay, Captain, don't miss this time, you know. And he said, "Well, I'll see. We'll see what position we're in when, when I'm ready to fire." Now, Ozzy was a, a camera nut. He was always trying to develop his 35 millimeter camera on the eyepiece of of the periscope, with not much success. But he was kept trying, and. It, there was this rubber eyepiece that he had to take off of there and make a little device to hold it in, in the camera. So when the captain got ready, he said, I want another tube. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try the same, the same plan I tried on the, his buddy. I, I'm going to let him see our scope. Well, this went on, he kept, at the proper time, he maneuvered so he, he would have to, now when he spotted her, he would have to maneuver to get at us because we had moved for different positions. He said, give me one, give me, give me, give me one torpedo ready. Okay, so um, these scopes are so close, they, if they go in the same position, they rub backs together, and, and I bump elbows with, you know, it, five people in the county tower. It's crowded. There is a um, the helmsman and the uh, skipper and the exec or the diving officer, and, uh, and that's three right there already. You have a uh, you have the quartermaster who has to read read numbers off of the scope for the captain, and. Uh, and and uh, and, and he, uh, the the radar is in there, but it wasn't working. You know what? When we're underwater, but uh, you always have a, a one ready to when you break water, come up. You have a screen to check out, and and the TDC operator, right? Yeah, the TDC right. operator's yeah, up there course. too. He's there. Yeah. He well, he does yeah, a couple of different chores, and and. Uh, when he got ready, he got in a position. He, the, uh, the nice thing about a submarine, this, this skipper tells the crew what's going on. You can hear it in the system over the whole, whole sub. And he, he said what he's going to do. He said, he said, I want this second. Uh, and their, their destroyers were larger than ours. And, of course, they were modern. They, were, they almost looked like cruisers. So he got up and he said, Ozzy, I'm going to prop. He got, he got, the numbers kept reading off. And he got the proper one. He says, fire, he fire him. And he did. He fired. And that one, that one cut him. Just, he almost hit him in the middle. Oh, he blew up out of the water. And they, one sub, one, one sub can break those ships in half. And that's what he did, and he was so overjoyed, he jumping up and down the deck, said, Ozzy, did you see it? Did you see it? With the other scope. He said, I didn't see anything, Captain. He says, what do you mean you didn't see anything? You know, because he's going to go down fast. And of course Ozzy didn't see it. He, his camera finally got to take the picture, so he didn't see it, but this picture was in the camera. And of course he, I said he was a camera guy and he had facilities to, to, to develop. And there it was, there it was. He showed it, Captain was overjoyed. And that picture was so popular it appeared in the 1942 Life magazine. I remember August of 1942. There is our, our kill. You could see the Japanese flag on top of one of the turrets, you know, the, 
the meatball and a couple of crew members even running around as it was going down. They broke in half and they sank. He was so overjoyed. He, he, he said, we're going to, he, 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 he got, <laughs> he, the farmer, uh, yeah, the farmers had made, also had in charge of little bottles of whiskey, you know, and he said, pass them, pass them out. He was, he wanted to show his, his delight in what he did. In two days, he got three, three vessels and, uh. Oh, we were we were singing. We were so happy, and and because uh, that's the guy. He was really the first the first depth charge we got. We got about twenty nine off of the one, one vessel. And this other guy, he you know he 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 threw thirty nine or forty at us. That's a lot. That's a lot. And how could how could you not get a get could they get a kill on a submarine with that many charges? You know, and uh, well, you either you you either got to echo ranging, or you listen for the kill. I'm talking about the enemy looking for you. That that's the options he has, and uh, so we managed to. To sneak around that and didn't give him that, that's how we, that's how we managed to, we were, we were absolutely lucky. And, uh, okay, we pulled in, now we found out, now, now we found out that all the carriers are gone. They said, no, we didn't get the Soyuz, we got the Kaga. Skipper said, he fished. We fished the life preserver, the round life, out of the water with, with a Japanese sailor hanging onto it. And it had the name on it. He wanted that. He wanted that. So he, he said, get that, bring it on board. He, he said, what do we do with the, with, with the enemy sailor who was hanging? He said, okay, he said, he, he, I'll, I'll, we'll take him on board. Well, he, he insisted he was Korean, that he wasn't Japanese. And he said, well, what are you doing on a, a Japanese vessel? Well, that was another story. We never got the proper, but he went, he didn't harm us. He was very, you know, he was very, very nice to have on. He, he went to work cleaning everything and he worked in, he wanted to be in the more the kitchen where the cook and I he cleaned he cleaned a lot of things and we got to like the boy, you know, the young fella. Then we went into Midway to see if we could offer any of our stores that they needed and so forth and and uh well, when we, we were told Pearl we're coming back, our run is over and they said, Not so fast, Nautilus. We have other you still got plenty of torpedoes left. You know, you fired four, then you fired three more. So you fired uh, seven or eight uh, torpedoes, and they, they said, you know, you know, you carry 28. That's your complement. And you, you put, uh, 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 you have uh, 10 forward and six aft. I mean, you have uh, six forward and four aft. So you have you have 10 torpedo tubes. So out of 28, you got 18 left. And uh, and the ones you fired, you subtract those, and and, uh, and 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 you know, then you gotta put live ones in in the you know in the tubes to be ready. And that's when I always said I my bunk was always on the skids that the torpedoes are lashed onto, so we can move them around. I just throw a, a thin mat a mattress on there, and I slept because it was okay. That's why I always said. I slept with the with the torpedoes, and uh, I spent in the forward room. Um, and uh, they said, "No, you're not coming into Pearl, Nautilus. We're sending you to Hanshu. Mm -hmm.